oversized image of a hooded cobra is the road sign of one of the most unique tourist attractions in the state of Florida. The Miami Serpentarium, which houses one of the most extensive collections of reptiles in the world. There is a fascination about snakes shared by people in all walks of life. So it is little wonder that thousands of visitors come each year to this unusual snake sanctuary. Vacationers from every state in the Union and from many foreign lands. And of all the snakes in the Serpentarium, it is the cobras that hold the greatest interest. These are the stars of the show, the deadly prima donnas. The hooded king cobra, a creature of regal dignity and graceful power, and sudden death. The king cobra from southeastern Asia, the spectacle cobra from India, and other members of the family from Africa have all been brought to the Serpentarium in Miami. The king cobra, largest of all poisonous snakes known, may reach a length of 18 feet. He has a nervous and suspicious temperament. He is an irritable king and easily aroused. William Haast, director of the Serpentarium, has had much experience in handling cobras, but he still treats them with the greatest respect. Gather round, folks, but not too close. Presenting King Cobra. Scientists studying the effects of the cobra venom on Mr. Haast, the only man who has dared to inject himself with lethal doses of raw cobra venom, have discovered that he has suffered no harm to any part of his system. This convinced Haast that cobra venom might be effective against certain diseases, especially infantile paralysis, and that the venom could be so used with safety. A group of healthy monkeys were selected for a carefully controlled experiment. All were injected with massive doses of infantile paralysis virus. Half of them were then treated with cobra venom, which had been detoxified so as to remove the harmful elements. All the untreated monkeys died of infantile paralysis. All those treated with cobra venom survived. The news was electrifying. The story was headlined all over the world. In some cases, sensational claims were reported. But even in the most conservative scientific circles, it was felt that the medical possibilities of cobra venom must be investigated further. At that time, there was no prevention against polio, no cure for this crippling disease. Techniques had been developed which were able only to lessen somewhat the crippling effects of infantile paralysis. Techniques which were only partially effective in the less severe forms of the disease. He has brought back from Asia and Africa many new cobras to provide more cobra venom with which the scientists may work. Capturing a cobra to feed it or extract its venom is an extremely dangerous and difficult job. Surprisingly enough, great care must be taken not to injure the cobra. Its neck is delicate and easily broken. And in spite of its great strength, this expensive reptile, the venom is extracted by allowing the cobra to pierce a diaphragm on a sterile container. Approximately six cubic centimeters of venom will be given by this 14-foot king cobra. 
This process cannot take place too frequently, nor can venom be extracted forcibly. Otherwise, the cobra might die. The venom, carefully extracted, must now be prepared for scientific use. Purifying the venom is a necessary step before it can be used. In addition, the water is evaporated leaving the venom in the form of crystals for greater ease in handling. Early experiments with cobra venom indicate that it can be used as a safe, pain-killing drug in many diseases, like cancer, for example, where the use of morphine or other habit-forming drugs might be dangerous. Cobra venom, used in this way, is neither harmful nor habit-forming. The accumulation and preparation of cobra venom for use in laboratories and hospitals is slow, painstaking business. Since the Miami Serpentarium is the only source of cobra venom in the United States, Mr. Haast and his staff bear almost the entire burden of supplying the research institutions of the country with this important new drug. The chief importance of cobra venom may lie in its use to combat virus diseases, not only infantile paralysis, but even perhaps such universal ailments as the common cold. Mr. Haast, possibly as a secondary result of his injections of cobra venom, has not had a cold in many years. It is understandable why medical men are interested in cobra venom. More and more scientists are reporting their work in cobra venom research. Not all the reports are favorable, but medical journals all over the world carry stories of the many uses to which this revolutionary drug is being put successfully. In virus research, particularly in the investigations of polio virus, the potential of cobra venom is being carefully tested. Techniques for growing concentrated virus cultures now permit scientists to examine the smallest of all disease-causing organisms under superpowered electronic microscopes, which can magnify as much as 77,000 times. To facilitate the use of cobra venom by the medical profession, one of the leading pharmaceutical houses, working with the Miami Serpentarium and Director Haast, has developed cobroxin, a highly purified extract of cobra venom carefully measured in standard units for treatment of intractable pain. The pioneering work with cobra venom has already had dramatic success. This energetic young man waving a greeting to his friend Uncle Bill was one of the first victims of polio to be successfully treated with cobra venom. The picture of health, this youngster was stricken with polio at the age of two and a half Paralysis was already spreading to the child's legs when cobra venom was administered. Recovery was quick and complete. An even more amazing recovery was made by Mary Catherine Quinn of Homestead, Florida. Mr. Haas, I owe my life to you and to the doctors who had courage enough to use the cobra venom as an aid in curing polio. I have no ill effects. I'm thankful to the cobra venom and that I'm still alive. I'm hoping and fighting for the time when every polio victim will have the same chance at recovery that Mary had. Here is Mary Quinn today. Four years ago, she was a victim of acute anterior poliomyelitis, bulbar polio, the most severe form of the disease from which few recover. Four days after she contracted bulbar polio, all hope was abandoned for Mary her parish priest was called in to give extreme unction. At that moment, as a last desperate measure, her physician administered cobra venom. The results were miraculous, and today Mary Quinn is as healthy and active as any other teenager.
cobra venom will not prevent polio, but as a cure, it should go hand in hand with the current preventative research being conducted. Today, William Haast is a dedicated man, working far into the night, exploring the secrets of the death-dealing, but perhaps also the life-giving cobra venom. Scientist and research pioneer William Haast strives to solve the mystery of the age-old cobra and extend the frontiers of knowledge.